Hello, everyone. How are you out there? Thanks for joining me on this Friday morning. We are going to be having a weekly wellness out of the box series. I'm so excited because there are so many of my friends that are practitioners that I truly want to share with the world the good things that they're doing. And so many of us are stuck in our traditional medical model of when something's going on with us, we go first seek our primary care physician. But I want to expose you to so many other possibilities that are out there for your health. So give me just a second and I am going to bring on, um, gosh, this is interesting, uh, Ruth, as a uh, you don't have an ad button. Give me just a second, you guys. And uh, so I can invite some of our viewers here. Give me just a moment. Because Ruth, I see you there. I am sending you an invite. So perfect. So hopefully, Ruth, there is a button to pick. Hey, everybody. Thanks for all jumping on, you guys. I just sent you a request, and you may have to go into your... It might pop up, and you can just hit accept, or you might just go into your notifications and see that I've requested you to join. I've invited you on. So see if you have that button. <clears throat> And uh, no worries, no rush, you guys, because I have so much to share with you about Ruth McCarty. Oh my gosh, she is absolutely amazing. So I do want to make sure she can get on for all of you guys. So again, Ruth, hopefully you got a notification. I'm going to try to add you one more time. It says that I've sent the invite to you. So just give us a moment, folks, and we should be good to go here. I know you're on and I know you're watching. I can see that. I can see I sent the invite. Just a little technology, everybody. So just give us a moment. And if you need to send me a message, Ruth, you can. There's also a button down at the bottom. It looks like a person. You can ask to join as well. Good morning, Liv. Good morning, Brenda. Good morning, everybody joining. Thanks so much. Just give us a moment. So, Ruth, look around on your page, and there should be a picture of like a person down at the bottom that you could add, <clears throat> or it could even be... Like I said, if you go into your Facebook notifications, not Messenger, but the notifications in Facebook that you've been invited on, because I know you're actually on and you can see this. So take a look and see if you can find any of those buttons. And so you guys, as I am waiting for Ruth to join... And we may have to jump back on and off. We'll see if she can't connect. So no big deal, no big deal. But let me just give you a little bit of information about this amazing woman that we're going to hear from here in just a moment. Is uh, Dr. Ruth McCarty practices traditional Chinese medicine, delivering integrative care to the residents of Orange County from infancy to adulthood. Dr. McCarty spends her career working to integrate these methods into Western medical institutions to maximize the healing and comfort process for patients. This care is continued in her private practice. It's called Open Mind Modalities. She has an office in Aliso Viejo and Orange, California. Today, she serves as the clinical director of acupuncture and Chinese medicine program at Chalk Hospital, which is the Children's Hospital of Orange County in California. She co-founded this program with her husband, neurosurgeon William Loudon, and he's the head neurosurgeon, uh, pediatric neurosurgeon there at Chalk. She's currently participating in two clinical patient trials at Chalk. She serves as an associate faculty member 
at uh, Southern California of Health Sciences in the College of Eastern M Medicine in Whittier, California. And Ruth began her Chinese traditional Chinese medicine internship program at Chalk Hospital in 2015. Chalk, an SCU partner in the clinical training of the TCM doctorate candidates. You guys, this goes on and on. She's participated in so many missions around the world. I'm going to let her talk about that a little bit. Gosh, she's gone to India, the Dominican Republic, and Kenya. So let me see, you guys, if I can re-invite her on. So I know, Ruth, again, you are there. Um, you can also request to join me in that bottom box. I'm going to see if I can... I was seeing if I can uninvite you and re-invite you. Hold tight, you guys. Just a little technology. No big deal. Um, give me one second to come back. This may um, get blurry for just a second as I request. Hey, Stefan. Hi. Sorry, you guys. Just give us one quick second. Hey, everybody. Okay, so I think um, she is going to switch modalities and get on her uh, get on her phone. It's, again, so crazy. Hey, Jody. Gosh, thanks for jumping on. So many people coming on today. So appreciate. So, you guys, what we're talking about today, <clears throat> just give us a moment, and Ruth is going to switch and jump on her phone here. <clears throat> and, Ruth, have your phone horizontal if you're hearing me. So, what I have really realized in my journey is, you know, when I really need, oh, goodness gracious, here we go, you guys. I think we are jumping on and, and oh, yay, yay, yay. All right, I am uh, popping my phone up. And there she is. Oh, oh. perfect. <laughs> I knew this was going to be hard for me. Oh, my God. You know what? I should have told you, and I, it is crazy that our phones are better than all of our computers. I do so much work today from my phone. It just seems everything works easier. I don't know why. <laughs> <laughs> um, but we're here, so we made it. So gosh, You have I'm, me now. Good. Well, welcome, and thank you. And you guys, I, you know, I love com connecting with our medical community, and just to let all of you guys know as viewers, so... Again, my name is Kelly Lepsha, and I'm a physical therapist specializing in the recovery of neurological disorders, stroke, traumatic brain injury, concussions, um, you name it. But um, Ruth and I have actually never officially met in person, but we have shared some patients together. Many. And uh, many patients. And this is what I love is all of our colleagues being able to connect. It doesn't always have to be in person. But what I want you guys as viewers out there to get the knowledge of what's possible because there are so much out there beyond just going to your primary care physician that you need to know about that may really serve you well in your health journey. I don't know what your health journey is or you, you or your family member is going through, but I think that knowledge is power. And so the more we can educate people on what's out there, the better. So I have to just reread your resume because it is so <laughs> impressive. <laughs> I tell you, you guys, um, it's, uh, no, truly, truly incredible. So, you know, again, you may have already heard me, but let me just recap again. Uh, Dr. Ruth McCarty, it practices traditional Chinese medicine, delivering integrative care to the residents of Orange County, ranging from infancy to adulthood. Dr. McCarty has spent her career working to integrate these methods into Western medical institutions to maximizing the healing and comfort process for patients. This is amazing. Um, and I really hope to do more and more of just the same. Her practice is called Open Mind Modalities, and she has an office in Aliso Viejo and in Orange, California. And today she serves as the Director of Acupuncture and Chinese Medicine Program at Chalk Hospital, which is the Children's Hospital of Orange County. And she's co-founded this program with her husband, neurosurgeon William Loudon. So I'm going to stop there, but I'm going to let her share a little bit about her journey. And maybe, you know, first and foremost, a little bit about yourself how you yourself got into, you know, acupuncture and moving in this direction of medicine. And then we'll kind of talk about the, the ways that this truly can help people. Sure. Um, my, Chinese medicine was not my first career. My first career after I graduated college, undergraduate, I was a first responder and worked on the beach as um, a lifeguard in San Diego County and Solana Beach. Loved it. 
it fueled my passion for surfing all over the world. I completely identified with my physical abilities to um, find joy in my life. And I traveled and I, you know, everything was, I was going to live that endless summer forever. And then I broke my neck. Ah. And I went from being able to depend on my body to work and to find joy and to find fulfillment in life to being able to do basically nothing and being in pain 24 seven. And out of absolute frustration, once my, um, my neck had healed, my bones had healed, but I had a lot of soft tissue injury and I had a lot of chronic pain. And I went from being very active to basically doing nothing for, I was in, I'd say chronic pain for two years that wow. I could find no help for. It just didn't change. So out of desperation, I went and sought alternative treatments and Chinese medicine is what really turned me around. And within three months of starting treatment, I applied to graduate school and went back to school and became a Chinese medicine practitioner because I walked that horrible walk of chronic pain and feeling like there are no other options and finding one. So, um, and found the most wonderful profession, so much fulfillment, helping others and really felt that Chinese medicine had something to offer that it just wasn't mainstreamed enough. You know, people had to go out of desperation and find treat. I did. Um, so that's how I got into Chinese medicine. Oh my gosh. You know, I think your story is similar to so many people that it they is. have an event, they go through the traditional course of medicine, nothing quite is helping them to that next level. And so they start their journey, right? And so this Absolutely. is exactly what I want to help people shorten that journey to see there are so many options out there and, and that combination of options. And often it's not one thing. I definitely will say that, right? It's often never one thing and there's no magic button or bullet or pill or anything. No, <laughs> no magic stick for you. I wish there was, but our doors would be like flooded with people that we could help heal. But, um, but part of it's the journey of the patient, right? And part of it is all the collectiveness that we can, we can help. Absolutely. <laughs> Multimodality um, approach. Body, mind, spirit approach to health. There's no silver bullet. And every person is so unique that the combination will never be the same for two people. Never. And I think that's why in um, any, anything out of the box alternative, it's very hard to study because everyone is so unique. So they're never going to all respond the same. And I know myself kind of out of the box physical therapist, people have sometimes criticized and it's like, well, I, w I might change at the very moment, depending on what the patient's responses give me of what we're going to do that day at that moment in that session. And I'm sure sometimes you are the same. Absolutely. Is there, there is no just, you know, standard protocol for, for every single person. So I love that. Maybe. Um, maybe you can start and um, Dr. Ruth, give people just a basic understanding. When people hear of acupuncture, some people I think have no idea what truly that does for the body. So just for beginners out there that don't know anything about it, um, just a, a, a little opening. Well, acupuncture is one treatment modality of Chinese medicine. So Chinese medicine is thousands of year old based in the Taoist, it was born out of the Taoist tradition that looked at relationships in nature to find harmony and restore peace. It doesn't have, I get this question a lot, it doesn't have a religious significance. It was just a system of healing that was born out of um, a culture thousands and thousands of years ago now it has stood the test of time, but acupuncture is just one treatment modality of Chinese medicine that looks at the body, mind, and spirit of the human being. You can't ever separate these aspects of the human being out. As in Western medicine, you go to the doctor and you present yourself, I have a physical problem, I have a disease. Western medicine is really myopic. They look at the disease. They treat 
the disease, where Chinese medicine takes a more um, holistic view and treats the disharmony a person has, you're not focusing on the disease, you're focusing on the person. And I think that's why it is so complementary and works so well with Western medicine, because we kind of fill in the cracks of addressing the whole person. You know, Western medicine is beautiful. When you need a surgeon, you need a surgeon. I can't right. help you there. <laughs> but, <Me> there are, <laughs> but there are other aspects to healing and care that, um, that complement Western medicine that I think Chinese medicine, and you don't always need a Western doctor, right? right. Um, PT, Chinese medicine, we can address problems and you can heal without, you know, invasive Western care. So um, this is a long winded answer to your question, but um, yeah, acupuncture is just one treatment modality. We do acupressure, we do moxibustion, we do cupping, we do many treatment options, but the whole goal of all of these treatment options is improving your quality of life and restoring harmony and balance to those three aspects of the human being and how you relate to your environment. We, you know, Chinese medicine practitioners, we care what you eat and what your environment's like and how you live and are you doing promotion and prevention um, and practices of good health. Those are all really important steps to the, the road to health and good quality of life. Absolutely. And I hope you guys are hearing it from so many people out in the world today, right? Like you can't just do one thing. We all have to take control of our own health through all of those things, looking at what we're putting in our bodies, you know, from eating to sleeping, to exercise, to downtime and rest and relationships and everything. It all, all goes Absolutely. <laughs> oh my gosh. Well, maybe you could also share with the listeners, you know, a few different sorts of, I know you treat many variety of patients, but some people, I don't, I think they might think I would go to acupuncture because I'm having chronic pain or I'm having a shoulder issue, but I don't think they think about maybe all the different diagnoses that potentially patients could come in to be treated for. So that is a very broad spectrum. Um, from working in the hospital inpatient or inpatient program, I receive consults from all specialty physicians in the hospital from GI conditions and neurological conditions and um, orthopedic conditions, you know, and those aren't just pain, those are digestive issues. But I want to take a step backwards. Uh, uh, we're going to go upstream a little bit on this. When we are talking about disease states, you have already gone down the river of health and you're pretty much going over the falls, right? Mm -hmm, Cause right. now you've developed this, um, you've developed this disease state where your body um, is way out of whack. So one of the oldest sayings in Chinese medicine that I adore is, and it's about a 2000 year old saying is constrained emotions are the basis of all pathology. And if we go back up that river, that stream, that river of life, and you start, you can use Chinese medicine as preventative medicine. So if you manage your stress and um, you can stay present and have good practices for health, you don't end up in those disease states. So what, I, I, what I'm trying to get across here is you don't have to be sick. You don't have to have a physical condition or even a mental condition, anxiety, stress, to seek treatment. Chinese medicine is a beautiful option for preventative care. Wow. You know what? That is perfect because we always talk about that each and every one of us are walking around and our bodies are in a state of dis-ease. We don't feel like we have anything going on, but something's going on for all of us, even if we're trying to keep ourselves in the best possible health, i.e. prevention. But if you don't, eventually that balance is going to tip itself and you'll end up with disease. And then ultimately it's, I can't say it's too late, but now you're like really working back uphill. So I love that. And I hope you guys are understanding what a great modality to go in for prevention. And I think people think about maybe massage for prevention or exercise for prevention, but I don't think they really consider, you know, Chinese medicine for prevention. I love that. 
Oh my, absolutely. Um, so I have a large pediatric practice. I treat a lot of kids. And something I see today, um, and I see it continuing more and more and more, is the stress that kids are put under today with having to drive and having these ridiculous schedules and the pressures at school and to achieve and achieve and achieve. Really young kids are ending up with pathology that is stress induced. So if your kid has um, sleep issues or, or anxiety issues or feeding issues or GI disturbance from eating in the car on the way to practice and never getting to sit down for a meal, and it's not the parent's fault. It's really not. It's our society has become so ingrained in achieve, achieve, achieve that we're not resting and sitting down to meals together and enjoying this present moment. So um, if your child is out of whack and can't sleep and, you know, is having trouble with school and, and, but doesn't really, you haven't taken them to the doctor yet, right? There's so much benefit from receiving preventative care for these kids to help manage their stress. So it doesn't turn in to my child has an anxiety disorder and needs medication. And that's the preventative aspect of care is not just for adults, but so important for kids and the stress we put on our kids today. I, I preach that because I, I see it. I have four kids ranging from, you know, 14 to 21. So they're in the thick of all that time right now. And it's, they are. it's real. It is real. And we as parents really have to try to soften what's happening in our society around us today for that exact reason. Wow. That's yeah. amazing. And so we have a lot of power to do that. Don't we? Oh, yes. gosh. Truly. <laughs> <laughs> I always say, we, if, if you think you need to be normal and do what everybody else is doing, then something's wrong. It's, you don't have to follow Agreed. that path. <laughs> Agreed. Agreed. Um, so, you know, I love the fact that you have pushed the forefront and really have taken alternative medicine into the hospital because I think hospitals are one of the biggest barriers into bringing in anything different. <laughs> <laughs> Um, so tell us a little bit about what you have established at uh, the Children's Hospital of Orange County. We have a wonderful um, integrative medicine program. It pretty much started with Chinese medicine. And um, I'm going to once again give credit to my husband, my dear husband, William Loudon. He, the way it started is he started referring me brain tumor pediatric children with brain tumors outpatient. He really saw the need for some um, supportive care. He would take out the brain tumor. These kids would have radiation and chemotherapy, and it's a really long and arduous path. But he was looking for something to support their quality of life. And that's what he found in Chinese medicine, supporting quality of life. So these kids started visiting me outpatient and when they would go in for chemotherapy or radiation, or they would have to go for an inpatient stay for fevers, neutropenia, you know, all of the conditions that they acquire while fighting their cancer, the moms were noticing, well, your child is five pounds heavier than my child, and they have good color, and they're eating, and they're, they look vibrant. They're thriving. What are you doing? And it was the moms speaking to each other that really kind of um, started the push for the supportive care. This is a really, I'm going to tell the story. It's a little bit long, but it's a really sweet story how I got in the beginning of inpatient privileges. I had one of the sweetest human beings I've ever met. His name was Taylor Martin, and I'm sure a lot of people watching. He was a beautiful young man with neurofibromatosis type 2 lived in San Clemente. He would be admitted, I think he had over 40 neurosurgeries in his life. Um, neurofibromatosis type two is you get benign tumors in your central nervous system and your brain and your spine. 
my husband was his neurosurgeon. He would, after surgery, he would have intractable nausea and vomiting. Horrible, horrible. Nothing helped it. The doctors, um, he was at Chalk Admission. Dr. Goodman, who was an intensivist in the PICU, every, because he was a hometown boy of San Clemente and everybody loved him so much, they were willing to go the extra step to try to help him. And I was rounding with my husband before I got privileges and I had been seeing Taylor outpatient. He had had brain surgery, he was throwing up, nothing could control it. And out of the physicians and the nurses and my husband's compassion for this patient, because they really wanted to do something to help, Dr. Goodman and my husband said, let's get you temporary privileges to help him. And that's how it started. Wow. They got me temporary privileges to help this one young man out of compassions in their heart to help this patient. And once I had temporary privileges, then that kind of really started rolling the ball to establish an allied health um, position for Chinese medicine. But that's what things, giant changes happen one step at a time one patient at a time, compassion in your heart for one child at a time. That's how we move mountains. Oh my gosh. It literally like brings chills to me because, uh, it's, uh, uh, it's all about quality of life and it is. And that was in 2002. And here we are in 2019 and we have a mainstreamed Chinese medicine program at Chalk and Chalk Admission. And it's a physician driven consult. So the physician can check a box in the electronic medical record that says Chinese medicine consult. That is so unique for anywhere in the country in any hospital. And it is covered by, and every child is eligible to receive it at no cost. It is a service that's provided by the hospital, which is truly amazing. That is truly amazing. Oh my gosh. Well, you guys, um, I, you know, I hope and pray that you don't have a child suffering from something that is experiencing or needs to be admitted to chalk. But <laughs> if you do, be sure you tap into those resources because that absolutely. is just something so incredible that most places absolutely don't offer. And they actually might think you're crazy if you ask for it. <laughs> <laughs> um, so maybe let's just round back about your practice here and how people can get a hold of you or reach you or anything else you want to share with the audience about your practice. Sure. We have two locations. We have um, five practitioners. Uh, most of my practitioners have gone through that. We have a really beautiful internship program at Chalk, where um, doctoral students are trained in the hospital. They do rotations and rounds with me. I've hired a lot of these, pra I, I think all my practitioners have gone through this program, but they're, they're trained in critical care. They are incredibly passionate um, about quality of life. And we have two clinics. You can go to ommacupuncture.com, look up Open My Modalities. We have a clinic in Aliso Viejo and Orange. And we are about to open um, hours from up until eight in the evening in Aliso Viejo. So people after work will be able to access our services. That is fantastic. And for everybody that wants more information or resources, I'll be sure down in the notes below to put how you can reach out and what their address is and things like that for more information. Um, wow. Well, you guys, it's such a pleasure. I know for all of us, it's hard to take time away from the clinic, our busy schedule. So one, I mean, gosh, Dr. Ruth, thank you so much for making oh, my the time. Pleasure. And, uh, you know, my, one of my roles as a physical therapist is just to educate people out there in the world of so many different options that may help you for prevention, because prevention is number one. Let me tell you, you guys don't want to wait till you're sick, right? <laughs> prevention, number one. And that her services are beautifully in conjunction with whatever else you're doing. Um, and then again, if you're out there, somebody that is suffering, what potentially could help you or a family member uh, in need right now? Thank you. So thank you, everybody, for joining us. All right. Have an absolutely great day and great weekend. We'll see you next time on our weekly wellness out of the box.